Hello, welcome back to the Archery of Pigments series. Uh, in the last episode, we left the synth in a right old chaotic state, having assigned just about every modulation control we could find. We're going to throw all of that away and get back to our default state. And today we're going to have a look at the LFO and see all of the commands that are available to us and what we can do to make the, the filter sound on this um, analog synth that we're playing with as interesting as possible. I've just realized I'm in wavetable mode, so let's get back to our analog synth and we'll get a default interesting start point. Okay, just a quick plug before we start of the um, Patreon account that I've got. If you have a look at the link below, um, that would be awesome. And there's also a YouTube channel member scheme. Uh, just click the red join button. And without further ado, let's have a look at the LFO. So we saw last time how easy it is to assign LFOs, just click the little plus button and I'm just going to drag this value up. And as you see me moving the control up and down, the yellow halo gets bigger and smaller. Sounds about right. Right, let's drill into all these controls, see what we can do. On the left hand side, we've got our waveform, which is currently assigned. And as I start increasing the knob, you can see that it morphs from a sine to a triangle very smoothly. I'll press my key and hold it down. There's our triangle. That's 100%. And then we start turning into a square wave. Our square waves have obviously got vertical lines on them, so there's going to be really abrupt changes with the filter cut off. And then finally, we enter sample and hold mode. Now, sample and hold is basically a means of taking an external source to arbitrarily set a particular amplitude of our modulation value and holding there. So we take a sample value, hold it, and then after a period of time, change our sample value to a new value so you can get really staggered and stuttered um, variances with this, kind of, with, with this kind of control. Now for the purposes of the LFO waveform, sample and hold in this context is essentially random. It's using a random noise generator to choose what that value is going to be for us. As we'll see later, there are other um, sample and hold modules in this synth that are capable of far more um, granular control. If I turn the rate control up, you'll hear something that sounds pretty familiar, particularly if you're a Rush fan. So that's the effect that they use on camera eye. Obviously not exactly the sound, but that's the idea. Got Neil Peart's drum fills filling my head at the moment. Let's get back to a simple sine wave. And we've just seen what the rate control does. Pretty straightforward. Symmetry basically breaks the, um, the symmetry between positive phase and negative phase. In other words, the up parts of the wave. If you imagine there's a center point here where amplitude of the modulation source is at zero, the upper parts are going to look different from the lower parts. At maximum symmetry, it's starting to look a little bit like a sawtooth wave, obviously not quite. Double click, set it back to zero. Phase controls where about in the wave uh, we begin, we basically trigger the wave. Now this is really important. If I slow the, the waveform down, you can see every time I press a key, it re-triggers the drawing of the wave from the beginning. We'll deal with why shortly. But if I move the phase so that the beginning of the wave is at the top, uh, the, the maximum amplitude, you get a completely different sound because that's what's being applied to the cutoff every time um, I hit a key. Similarly, let's knock it down all the way low. Get the, the most dramatic anti clockwise turn of the cutoff knob. So basically, the cutoff is starting here where my mouse currently is every time I hit a key. Oh, 
Okay, so why is the wave beginning to redraw every time I press a key? Well, it's because my reset source is currently set to keyboard. Now, poly keyboard means that every note that I press, this is mind blowing stuff, generates a new wave, a new LFO. So if I, it's really hard to tell what's going on here. Okay, if I make the rate really low and try to get this cut off sounding as extreme as possible. And I'm actually going to bring the phase to the point where it's starting out really dull. And you can hear me bringing four keys in there, playing a C major seven. Now, if I start staggering those, you hear each one of those keys has got its completely own independent wave and it's not having any impact on the sweep that's being applied to the other four notes. If I switch to mono keyboard instead, now I've only got one filter. And so when I play the same chord, my C major seven, every one of those notes is being subjected to the last key that gets pressed. So I'll play the chord quite slowly. It's only when I stop introducing new notes do we finally get to hear the sound because every single key is re-triggering all four or the wave that's being applied to all four notes simultaneously. In legato mode, I'll get a slightly more sensible. So every note that I press has the filter applied to it unless I've already got a key pressed down. And then all of the other keys that I pressed were basically jumping on the bandwagon and it wasn't triggering a new firing of the LFO. A completely different sound. They are really dramatically different filter sounds, but by default were set to poly keyboard. And you can see we've got some far more exotic um, re-triggerings. Let's re-trigger it off LFO too, because we've, we've had a quick look at the LFOs now, so we're starting to get familiar with them. And you can see the LFO2, its rate, and every time it gets to the end of its period, it's re-triggering LFO1. And what I've done with this particular configuration, I didn't intend to demonstrate this, but it's really cool, so we'll stick with it. Because LFO2 is set to poly keyboard, it, it is still re-triggering every time I press a key. Watch. We're only getting that effect because of LFO2, not LFO1. LFO1 is no longer in control of its own destiny. It's being driven by LFO2. If I set LFO2 to free running instead, it is not subject to any external control, so it never refires. And what we're going to get now is every time I press a key, we're going to get whatever tone LFO2 happens to be imposing on us. So we never get to the low part of LFO1 because this thing is just too fast. Slow that right down. Now LFO2 is really, really slow which means LFO1 is having an opportunity to complete. And in about a minute's time, <laughs> this wave's finally going to end. Can I talk for long enough? I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll come back in a few seconds. Okay, here we go. I've spared you the tedium of having to watch that little thing. And by the time it gets to the end of its cycle, it finally re-triggers LFO1 arbitrarily. Let's make the pain stop and turn it back into poly keyboard mode. And we're back in control uh, via the keyboard again. 
Now, the easiest way for me to demonstrate what unipolar does is with pitch, because what's going to happen is that when we engage unipolar mode, we're going to halve our modulation range. And the easiest way to demonstrate that is to do it via pitch where we can actually send it through a tuner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this filter cut off away. We're done with it for now, and I'm going to introduce some coarse tuning instead. So there's our pitch going up and down. So here's our tuner. And what I'll do is I'll catch it at the top. And it's now traveling incredibly slowly. And you'll see that it gets to G flat four and then starts coming down. And at its absolute uh, lowest point, G flat 1. So G flat 4 to G flat 1. Now I'm going to press the unipolar button, which means we only get positive modulation now. If I um, temporarily turn this modulation off, there's my C3. Turn it back on. So we're still going to get to the same high point. We're still going to get to G flat 4. There it is hitting its high point, and then it'll start coming down again. But when we get to the trough, we're at C3, and we don't go below C3, and then we start going up again. So what that actually means is it's taking twice as long to go between C3 and G-flat 4 as the bipolar modulation is, because it's the same sine wave, cycling at the same speed but the bipolar mode is traveling twice the distance for everything positive it does it does a negative modulation so just bear in mind it doesn't the lfo doesn't magically just stop and then wait for half of a cycle and then start doing something again it spreads its work out so that it's only ever doing positive values so this is just basically your toggle button between those two options and you also get a um, a representation of it on the knob itself. So we're looking at um, course control now, and you can see that in unipolar mode, the thick yellow um, arc starts wherever the knob value currently is, and it only goes positive. If I turn unipolar back off, you can see that the, the arc hasn't changed in size as far as the positive stuff's concerned. It's just been mirrored in the negative territory to represent the fact that it goes both up and down. Now that we've jumped across to mess with um, pitch, we might as well stay here. So I've set my course knob back to zero so that when I press a C, I'm actually hearing a C. And can you see that despite the fact that it's immediately starting to modulate, it is actually generating a C3. That's the first thing that happens when I press the keyboard and then it starts tuning up. If I introduce fade, it sticks for longer without doing any modulation. So set it to the maximum value. And now it's a really slow slide on the LFO curve. And this modulation amount is basically being drip fed into the system rather than dumped in all in one go. Smooth mode allows us to just flatten the curve out. As opposed to a higher rise in pitch. And what key track does is allow us to basically use the keyboard to change the rate of the, uh, of the LFO. So if I introduce some key tracking, Press a, sl uh, um, a low key, so I press C2 here, and up at the top, see the LFO moving faster, faster still, all the way at 200%, low key, very slow, high key, very fast. Definitely think I've earned a cup of tea after that one. Uh, hit the like button if you agree. I'll see you for the next episode. Thanks very much.